Hello, hey guys. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate the heart rate of an ECG using two different methods. Now the good news is by today's standards you actually don't necessarily need this skill anymore because modern defibrillators and ECG monitors actually tell you the heart rate. If you don't, if you're not able to see the heart rate on the screen, you can calculate it yourself manually, you can use oxygen saturation probes, so it's one of those skills that's slowly moving away from paramedic practice. However, there's always going to be that case where you actually need to do it manually. Just say, for example, your patients have got some kind of hypovolemia and you can't palpate their radial pulse and therefore they're peripherally shut down and they're cold and the SATS probe doesn't pick it up. And you do place an ECG um, on, this, on the patient and you're using a machine that needs up upgrading and it doesn't have it on it. So there's always going to be that occasion when you need to be able to calculate an e uh, a heart rate using uh, an ECG. So I'm gonna show you two methods. The first one is the simplest method, however, you do need a calculator. Now the reason I say you need a calculator is because as human beings, we do like to prove how great we are. Unfortunately, that leads to errors, which leads to patients being harmed. Now, there are occasions when you don't need a calculator, for example, with this ECG, but I would always advocate it anyway. Now, the first method is the divide by 300 method. So the first thing you need to do is to find two RR intervals and try your best to follow lead two. So going back a step, here's your normal 12 lead. So lead one, lead two, lead three, lead AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, two, three, V4, V5, V6. That's your 12 lead ECG. And there's a couple of things there intentionally missing off of the slides, off of the, uh, the ECG. Now, it doesn't actually matter which view you take this from, but it's just easier for, to take it from a lead two. Now, what you do is you find your R wave, and then you find another R wave. And you have a look to see how many large squares there are in between those R waves. Uh, for the purposes of this image, there's these two here, but they're all the same and you take the number of large boxes and you divide it into 300. So 300 divided by, on this occasion, two. And this heart rate is 150. So always try and use an R wave that is on the, the thick line. If you use it in between one of the lines and it's gonna be more complex for you. Um, so 300 divided by two, that's great. That one works every time. Now the other method, is this method. So 330 large squares, so you're gonna need a longer strip. That's one of the disadvantages. So you need to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what it's saying here is 30 large squares is equal to six seconds. So what we do is we've taken our 30 large squares, we count how many R waves there are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we times it by 10, because then that gives you six times 10 is, is a minute. And that's how, the, that one's calculated, so that's 80 beats per minute. Okay, so that's the micro lecture, guys. Please get online and take a look at this stuff as well in your own time. I look forward to speaking to you again shortly. Take it easy, guys. Bye-bye.